Hello there, good morning. So we're going to continue our discussion no? during the conduct of ocular inspection and or relocation survey. Meron kayo nakitang easement on the property that you intend to buy, which makes you think twice on whether or not to proceed with the sale. Please, if you like my lecture, do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for future updates. Let us start. Actually, maraming kinds of easement, no? Um, here, I enumerated the different kinds of easements under Philippine legal settings, no? Number one is the right of way, the easements relating to waters, tapos itong light and view, party wall, drainage of buildings, intermediate distances, easements against nuisance, lateral, and subjacent support. Now, we already discussed itong easements against nuisance. In fact, if you could remember, yung from the property line, you could only plant small trees or shrubs after 50 centimeters. Kung big trees naman, it should be after 2 meters from the property line. That is what is uh, mandated by law, by the new civil code, and that is considered as an easement or a burden on the property owner because you cannot do otherwise by planting near the property line. Alright? So, now... Today, we are going to discuss itong easement of right of way. Yan ang pag-usapan natin. Why? Because this is a very important topic. Because ito po yung usual po talaga na nagkakagulo ang kapitbahay, kaibigan, best friend, magkapatid, everybody else. No? Maraming pong cases sa court ngayon nito, itong right of way problem. And we have to discuss this because ito talagang bagay na ito, when you conduct ocular inspection, nakikita po ninyo ito eh, during the conduct of ocular inspection, even by viewing it, or later on, even after the conduct of relocation survey, makita ng geodetic engineer, sir, wala palang right to pay itong property na bibilhin nyo. So, yan po ang pag-uusapan natin. Okay. I have here a picture. No? Ito ba yung parating dinadaanan natin? Maraming farm. Tapos, that is where we pass through with our crop. Dala natin yung crops, mga ani natin, yung mga... Lahat ng mga pananim na galing sa ating farm, dumadaan tayo dyan. Pak, uh, dyan din tayo nag-hiking, etc. However, this property is not ours. Itong dinadaanan, hindi yan natin. Merong may-ari po niyan. Pinapadaan lang tayo because, uh, you know, uh, friendly relationship. But, uh, time will come na mag-change ang mind niya and he could exercise his uh, dominion over the property as he sees to exclude us because one of the bundle of rights, di ba? Sabi ko, is to exclusive possession of the owner. So, he excluded us, hindi na tayo pwede pumasok dyan. Yan po ang start ng problem on the issue on whether or not pwede ba tayong maghingi ng right to pay o hindi. Now, what I'm going to discuss today is actually a true and actual scenario. A true and actual case, although na settle man later on, but I will try to discuss it with you. Alright, here is this uh, scenario. No? If you will notice here on the upper right-hand corner of this uh, drawing natin, maunlad ang lugar na yan. May plaza, mayroon ng mall, may hospital, may golf course, etc. Completo. And ito yung road nila. Tapos, here, merong binibenta na property. Dalawang property po. Rush sale ito kasi yung, yung, ano, yung may-ari gusto nang umalis pumunta abroad. So, nangyari niyan, ito si S, eh, binili niya yung isang property. May barkada siya na si Mr. D, binili yung uh, kabilang property. Now, take note that ito si D and S, they are very, very close friends. Since noong elementary, high school, college, talagang magkasama nyan sila. Parang bestie yan sila or soulmate na tawag nila, no? Now, if you will also notice, dito sa property sila na bilhin nila, puro sila may frontage dito sa left side. But, ang maganda kay S is that corner lot ang sa kanya. Alright. Ano so, nangyari? Of course, nagpatay sila ng bahay. Tapos si D, gaya-gaya din, patay rin siya ng bahay. Now, considering that itong area ni, ni S is malapit sa plaza, no? ito yung plaza, oh. 
eh, nag-request ito ngayon si D. Sabi niya, pwede bang uh, S. Dan ako dyan sa iyo para anlayan naman kasi kung dito pa ako sa aking frontage mong Dan, dyan na lang ako magdaan sa iyo. Total bestie naman tayo. Sabi niya, si Kao naman, no sure. Sige, no problem. So, anong nangyari? Open ni S. ang area at ginawa ng passage through para kay D. No? Of course, nilagyan din lang ng, ng fence and a sm small fence also from Mr. Uh, from ano, dito sa papunta kay D. No? So, yan. Yan ang senaryo ngayon. Now, they, they, they became very, very close. Lalo na mayroon na si ilang uh, properties na magkatabi nga sila. Usapan pa kanila. pag natin ito, uh, mas malaki ang mabenta ko isabay natin ito benta kasi uh, mas malaki ang value. So, sige lang pa, Tingnan muna natin ngayon kung kaya natin ibenta ng... Antayin lang muna natin ng few more years, baka magtaas ang presyo. So, okay ang relationship nila. And one day, D needed money. And sabi niya kay S, S, gusto ko mag-borrow ng money sa'yo. Sabi niya, or, hindi na lang ako mag-borrow, nakakaya. Benta ko na lang itong property ko sa'yo. Sabi niya, S, D, I can lend you. No, no, no. Bilihin ko. Uh, I don't want to take advantage of you. So, they segregated a portion of this property of D. No? And D sold it to S. So, may-ari na ngayon ito, si S na. Bili niya. Sabi niya, ah, uh, ano ah, D, you could pass there anywhere you want. Uh, you're, you know, we are bestie, we're good friends. Wala may yung problema sa atin. Okay, so, no problem. Problema, actually, the relationship that uh, went well, started well, ended sourly pagdating nitong babae nito. Hindi ko nalang mention ng name. But, sabi ni DKS, S, I'm excited to introduce to you my girlfriend. I just met her and we're planning to get married. Nagulat si S, my girlfriend ka pala? Ikakasal ka na? Ayun. So, she got broken hearted. Why? Because si S pala, Ang kanyang relationship with D is that mahal na mahal pala niya si D. Gusto niya since from the beginning until that time. And ito naman si D, ang tingin niya is kaibigan lang talaga tayo. So iba no? Iba ang tingin na. So you know, when anger strikes, especially coming from the heart of a woman, ba? Pagkakinabukasan. Ito ang nangyari. Ni close ni S yung daanan ni D. Tinanggal niya yung fence. Wala ng passageway si D papunta doon sa lugar niya. And yung dito naman sa area na ito, permanently closed niya yan. Talagang sina, sinir, sinarhan niya si, si D. So, inyari, ito na yung area ni D ngayon. Sabi, hindi, bakit ganito, S? Akala ko ba kaibigan tayo? Ay, oh, yun. Yes, that's true. Sa iyo, kaibigan tayo. Sa akin, hindi na. It ended when I said, when I say it ends. Ano ba yun? Hindi <laughs> may identity. Alright, so, in this case, um, there is a need for D to have a passageway. Klarong-klaro po yan na kailangan niya ng passageway. And of course, in order to get a passageway, we have to determine first what are the rights of D under the law. First is that we should understand that ito si D is the dominant estate. Ito kanyang property, no? Ito, ito, itong property in dominant estate. Whereas ito naman si S, itong property niya, itong dalawa, yung nabili niya isa, Serbian estate sila. Now, and D here could ask for a right of way. An easement of right of way. Now, take note that an easement of right of way is a privilege granted by law to a person to pass another's land usually through one particular path. No? Isang tuloy na daan lang. And this privilege no, to pass is given to the owner of the dominant estate. No? Yung nakulong. And the land where he passes. So, he passes here to the Serbian estate. So, the privilege to pass is given to the dominant estate 
and he passes to the Serbian estate. However, the Serbian estate retains ownership of the property, subject lang doon sa easement on right of way, na meron siyang easement of right of way. So, ganyan po ang mayayari niyan. Now, of course, the first thing that they will do is to talk to S. S, baka pwede pag-usapan. No, ayoko na makipag-usap sa iyo. Bakit nga? Hindi ko maintindihan. Sa isip-isip niya, ang tanga-tanga mo. Ang tagal na ako nangantay sa iyo. <laughs> so, wala. So, on next step, D went to the barangay. Wala pa rin compromise. Asking for a right of way. Then, nahulog na sa lupong taga-pamaya pa. Three times for consultation. Wala pa rin. A certificate to file action was issued in favor of D. And no choice, but D went to court. Puta siya sa court. Eh. Now, the court will be guided by the provisions of the civil code, especially under Article 649 and decisions of the Supreme Court. Now, under Article 649, ito pong itatanong ng judge. Okay. Nandito kayo ngayon sa korte. Ah. Tatanungin kayo kung makapasa ba ang itong right mo to ask for a right of way. Number one. Is the dominant estate surrounded by other estates? Claro, in our picture, surrounded siya. Wala na eh. Dito meron ding estate. Dito ibang may-ari. Dito iba rin na may-ari. Okay, sabi ng judge. Check. Pasado ka sa first test. Second. No adequate outlet to a public highway. Yes, judge. So, makita mo naman kulong na kulong ako. O, yan pula na yan. Eh. Kulong na kulong ako. Okay. You pass. The next is test. Number three. That the isolation was not due to the acts or fault of the owner of the dominant estate. Ibig sabihin, hindi kasalanan ni, ni D kung bakit nakulong siya. Sabi niya, wala akong kasalanan, Judge. Pinakilala ko lang sa kanya itong girlfriend ko. Pagkabukasan, sinarahan na niya. Oh, okay nga, no? Wala kang kasalanan. Basta sidara lang. Okay. Check. Pasado ka. Now, let us proceed. Remember that kita mo itong tao na itong may hawak na ito. May pasan-pasan. That is what we call burden. It is a symbol of burden of a person carrying something. I'll explain to you later what is the meaning of this. Now, the judge proceeded with the hearing. Okay. Kailangan, the right of way na kinlaim mo, Mr. D, is at the point least prejudicial to the Serbian estate. Ano ba yung least prejudicial? Yung, yung hindi siya lugi ba ang Serbian estate or hindi masyadong nasira yung kanyang ari-arian or yung property. Uh, siya yung less ang damage to the property niya. No? So, And second, sabay na natin, ang distansya ba ng dominant estate to a public highway may be the shortest. Let us see again back the example. All right. Okay. Take note that ang hinihingi ni D is ito, itong red line na ito. Pasado ba siya sa distance from the dominant estate to a public highway may be shortest? And the answer is no. Hindi siya pasado. Kasi, Meron namang pwedeng daanan dito eh. Dito si to sa green area na ito. Pwede naman dito siya magdaan eh. So, is the right of way claim at the point least prejudicial to the Serbian estate? Ah, prejudicial. Talagang nakakasira talaga sa Serbian estate ni, ni S. Dahil nga, imagine sa gitnang gitna talaga dadaan. Hindi pwede. So, ano pala ang dapat? Ang dapat is dito magdaan. Yan. Bakit? Kasi yan ang pinaka magandang rota, sabi no ni nung lawyer ni ano ni, ni D. All right. Sabi ni Judge, let us see. Is the distance from the dominant estate to a public highway the shortest? Oh, claro na. The answer is yes. Okay, check. Question. Is the right of way claim is at the point least prejudicial to the Serbian estate? Yes. 
Kasi, imagine, dito naman sa gitna ang hinihingi ninyo. Hindi pwede. Sabi ng judge, ganito yan. Para hindi naman maging prejudicial on the part of S. No? Kasi siya yung servant S. Burden nga. Ito yung kinakarga na ng tao na ito. Burden yan sa kanya. How about if we do it like this? Dito na lang tayo. Yan. Yang area na yan. So that, and with that, it would show that it is a point least prejudicial to the Serbian estate. Sabi naman ni D, Judge, pero it's convenient on your part na dito ako magdaan, dito dito sa area na ito. Tsaka nasanayan na namin yan, yung magkaibigan pa kami, dito talaga ako dumadaan eh. E kung dito ako, dadaan, Judge, layo pa o, ikutin ko pa yan, may traffic light pa dito, matatraffic ako. Tapos, di talaga, it's convenient here. Now, convenience ang argument ni Mr. D. Now, Supreme Court said in many occasions that convenience is actually not a basis for granting an easement of right of way. Yan. Why? Kasi po, ito po siya is actually a burden. Yan na. Burden to the part of the Serbian estate. It's a burden to S. Imagine na, kanya yung property, tapos may ibang tao ang gagamit dahil nga lang walang madaanan ang dominant estate, ipapagamit sa kanya. So, that is a burden on the part of uh, the Serbian estate. And it is not the basis for granting an easement of right of way kung hinihingi mo yung mas magandang daan, yung dominant estate, because of convenience only. Alright? Okay, Judge. So, tapos na, Judge. Hindi. Set tayo ng continuation of hearing. May hearing pa tayo. Hindi pwede tapo yan. Okay. Continuation of hearing. In the matter of D versus S for road right of way. Is meant of right of way which is considered as a burden. Okay ka na doon sa tatlong instances. Doon ka na lang sa gilid. Sabi ni, ni Judge kay D. Okay na ako doon. So, tuloy na natin, Judge. At saka, total free naman eh. Now, the question is that yung easement of right of way na ibibigay kay D, free ba yun? And the answer is, no, it is not free. There is a payment of proper indemnity. Now, what are the rules? Okay. Ito po ang rules. Kapag permanent passage ang gagawin, yung value of the land and the amount of damage caused to the Serbian estate, yun ang babayaran ni D. Oh, permanent passage. Contemporary passage lang, yung mag ka ng crops, dadaan ka lang para kumuha ng crops mo or yung mga pananim or yung mga prutas, tapos wala naman. Tapos or magdaan ka lang para mag-cultivate, maglagay, tapos wala ka na naman. Eh, ang babayaran mo damage lang. Parang every time you pass, you have to pay for damage. Parang in the form of rent ba? No? Yan ang nangyari. Kasi dumadaan ka. Parang tolpi. <laughs> Yan ganyan siya. Now, in the case of D, let us see. Ano ba ang purpose talaga nito ni D, itong daanan na ito? Eh, talagang somehow a permanent passage. Diba? So, if it is a permanent passage, therefore, he has to pay the value of the land and the amount of damage cost to the Serbian estate. Yan. Ah, ganun pala yung judge, sabi ni D. Okay, sige, wala akong magawa. Bayaran ko, magkano value of the land. Paano ma-determine ang value of the land? Well, basically, uh, titingnan yung fair market value ng land and pag hindi magkaintindihan sila sa value ng land, they get a license uh, real estate appraiser to conduct an appraisal on the value ng land. Of course, they also need a geodetic engineer to measure, no? Kasi, depende rin yan sa needs ni D. Kung dadaan mo sa sakit, ang weed, no? Hindi naman pwede sabihing ali lang ibibigay ni Serbian Estate, ni S. Hindi. Kasi, depende sa needs. So, pwedeng 8 meters para makadaan ang sasakyan niya or ang truck niya, pwede niya hingiin yun. So, kukuha ng geodetic engineer, the determined as iba value niya ngayon ng real estate appraiser, and that is the value na ibabayad niya ngayon kay S. Plus, the damage cost of the property since permanent uh, it may be a one-time damage or it may be that 
baka monthly. Depende na sa usapan nila. Parang rent nga ang nangyari. Parang tolpi. Alright. So, sabi ni D, if that case, your honor, dahil na bayad naman ako, itong area na ito, akin na po ito. Kasi, naibenta ko, naibenta na ito ni S sa akin. So, isegregate ito, ipatitle ko sa aking pangalan. Is he correct? And the answer is, no, 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 sabi ng character na din. Hindi, there is no sale that happened. Why? Because what this proper indemnity under the law is saying is for the beneficial use. You paid it for the beneficial use of that property or that right of way that you are passing through. Yan ang reason po. No? So, the Supreme Court in the case of the Guzman versus Phil and Best, no? dito January 14, 2015, sabi ng Supreme Court, Kasi ang, 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 ang counter, ang argument kasi ng mga na petitioners dito, unfair daw sa kanila na i-require sila to pay the value of the affected road because it is tantamount to buying the property without them being issued a title daw. Tsaka, hindi naman kami maka-exercise ng, ng right of dominion over it, sir. Hindi ma, hindi ma title na. Tapos, dapat siguro... Sale dapat yan, ang sabi ng Supreme Court. In easement of right to pay, there is no alienation or sale of the land occupied. The payment of the value of the land for permanent use of the easement does not mean an alienation or sale of the land. In fact, under the law, 650, Article 650, and unlike in the purchase of property, should the right to pay no longer be necessary because the owner of the dominant estate has joined into another abutting on a public highway, And the Serbian estate, si S, demands na tapusin na itong ating easement, then he is entitled to the return of his indemnity. So, ibig sabihin, dahil may babalik rin pa pala yan sa iyong pera mo, hindi, hindi, hindi sale ang pinag-uusapan dito. Yung parang ginamin ng Supreme Court dito, suppose kasi kung mabili ito ni, ni D itong area na ito, yung sa left side niya, so hindi na kailangan po itong itong easement na ito. Pag hindi na kailangan ng easement na ito at gusto nang i-stop ni S ang easement, isa uli niya yung indemnity. Yan. Sa uli niya yung naibayad ng value ng land ni D sa kanya. Yun po ang ibig sabihin. Alright? Now, now, just a reminder po, no? Sa inyo po na buyers, no? Yes, uh, buyers. You, you, Mr. Buyer, actually, talking to you. Now, Suppose you want to buy this property, no? itong after ocular inspection or location survey for that matter, nakita ninyo merong problem on uh, road right of way. And suddenly, merong ang right of way, tapos then you inspected, meron naman pala silang agreement or meron naman pala silang court order. And you continued to buy the property. You proceeded to buy the property. Now, first thing that you should remember is ito po. Um, have the easement of right of way annotated on the title. Uh, Ipa-annotate ninyo yon yung agreement nila. Kung hindi sila nakarating ng korte, annotate ninyo doon. Pwede yan, pan-authorize to annotate. Tatanggap yan ng ROD. Para lang naman, ang, ang, ang point lang naman dyan is for the whole world to know. Kasi anybody transacting on that title, on that property and on title, would know that, oh, there is a uh, right of way given to Mr. D. Meron pala silang easement dito. Okay? Even the court order, kung wala sila agreement, kung may court order, ipatatak yan doon sa title ni S. Para ma-establish doon, and that will be an effective notice to the whole world that there is an easement in favor of D, the dominant estate. Eh, kung paano kung wala po silang title, sir? Eh, eh ang gagawin is, ikaw nakabili, tapos meron silang agreement, palagyan mo na ng tarpuli na this is a subject for a, a right of way passage by uh, D, no? Or by me, kung nakabili ganun. Para lang naman so that the public will know. Alright? Okay. Second thing that you will do is that you have to remember that you maintain and repair the easement of right of way, no? Without expectation of reimbursement. Dapat ka sabihin mong, dapat pasebento ko ito, lagyan ko ito ng pader dito, paganda ito, lagyan ko ng lampos, etc. Then later on, nangyik ka ng reimbursement, no? Because under the law, you are directed to maintain and repair the easement of right of way. Alright? 
And number three, the buyer. Remember, you have to pay for the proportionate real property tax. So, i-measure po ito. Ilang square meters ito. Tapos, magkano ang tax? Madivide naman yan siya. Makompute yan siya. Babayad ka ng real property tax. Bibigay mo yan kay S. Alright? And, of course, uh, take note, I assume here in this problem is that nabigay na ni D ang proper indemnity. Tapos, ang damages, let's say, kung monthly, then you'll be the one to continue to pay monthly there. Pero kung bulk naman ang damage na binigay, then wala ka na rin babayaran. Take note that um, you can recover the amount paid for the indemnity, no? But without interest. Kasi baka sabihin mo, after 10 years, eh, 10 years yan, eh, nangyari is, ikaw nang may-ari nito ng lupa nito. Nabilihan, nabili mo na itong lupa na ito. Okay? Tapos, sabihin mo ngayon na stop na lang natin itong yung easement. Then you return to me my, my the, the payment that uh, made to you, Miss, Miss S. Okay. Pero, but the interest din ha? Wala pong interest kasabi. And you cannot recover the damages paid kasi that would be considered parang rent nga, no? Pwede kasi it's possible kasi in this area, baka magkaroon ng bypass road. Kasi ganyan yung panahon yan, daming bypass road, no? What if itong area na ito, ito, biglang nagkaroon ng bypass road dyan? So what will happen is that hindi mo na kailangan itong easement na ito. Hindi mo na kailangan itong daanan na ito. Mas malapit na dito. E de, dito ka na dumaan. But you could recover, you may recover the amount paid for indemnity uh, if the Serbian estate CS will extinguish already the easement. Alright? Okay. What else? Remember that you may be required to sign, to sign some documents to cancel the annotation of easement of right of way annotated on the title. Kasi, well, let's say, okay, cancel na natin ito dahil akin yung area dito sa left side, sabi ni D, hindi ko na kailangan yung easement mo. Or may bypass road na sa likod, pwede na ako magdaan, ayoko na yung easement mo. Balik mo sa akin yung binayad ko sa iyo. Okay, balik ko. Pero pirmahan mo itong document na ito. Affidavit of cancellation of the annotation of the right to pay or an SPA or the authority for me to have it cancelled. Pirma ka rin yan as the dominant estate. Alright? So, remember those things. Alright, as a pa, parang food for thought po, no? Um, payment of the value of the land for permanent use of the easement does not mean an alienation of the land occupied. And the payment of indemnity is merely for the use of the right of way and not for its alienation. So, take note of that. Food for thought. I'll see you again soon.